My name is Leo Groner, and we're going to talk about programming in Java. In particular, we're going to talk about objects today. You've been dealing with objects and classes all of your life. Some objects are concrete. Your car, your house, your dog are all objects. The concept of a car, the concept of a house, the concept of a dog, these are classes. Classes can also represent abstract objects. So an individual bank account, a lesson, the graphic user interface button on a window. These are also objects. But the concept of a bank account, the concept of a lesson, the GUI buttons in Windows, these are also classes. We can use Java to model classes and objects. Java objects have data, that is properties, states, and they have methods, actions, behaviors implemented in software. As an example, let's take a coffee maker object. The coffee maker object has data. It has water, an amount of water perhaps. It has a filter, it's either present or absent. There may be coffee grounds present or absent in the filter. There may be coffee in the carafe. But there are also methods associated with a coffee maker object. For example, one obvious one is to make coffee. But a coffee maker can also heat water. Other actions are we can remove the filter, we can add the filter, we can add water, we can add coffee grounds, and we can pour into a cup. Test your understanding of these concepts. For a bank account object, Please provide some useful data and methods. I'll wait while you write these down. Here are some that I came up with. For example, a bank account object would have a customer's name, last and first, his address. Bank account objects tend to have account numbers. A bank account would have an balance, the amount of money in the account. It might have an interest rate. There are also methods that are associated with a bank account object. We can establish a new bank account. We can deposit money. We can withdraw money. We can apply interest. We can change the address. A couple of ideas associated with objects are the notion of static and instant. Static things are associated with the class as a whole. So for example, there are properties that are associated with the class. We call them class variables. Methods or code can also be associated with the class as a whole. Static methods can access static variables, but not object properties directly. Instant items are associated with an individual object. So, for example, an individual object has properties. We call these object variables. There are also methods. And when we apply methods to an instant, we have to talk about which instance, which object we're applying this method to. Instance methods can directly access reference object variable. Let's look at some examples. The Java term class, we can view as a template, an abstraction, a concept. So we can talk about the concept of a car, the concept of a dog. An object is a particular instance of a class. So we can talk about my particular car. We can talk about my dog named Bentley. We can also talk about things that are static, that is, associated with the class as a whole, and instant, which are associated with an individual object. So, for example, a property of the car class is the number of cars. The number of cars is not a property of any individual car, 
with the property of the class as a whole. We can also talk about the wheels for a car. All cars that I know about have four wheels. It would be redundant to name the number of wheels individually for each car. We can also have code that is not associated with a particular object. For example, uh, I can calculate the area of a circle just knowing its radius. I don't have to know any other details of the circle. We can also have instance items which are associated with a very particular object. For example, in my car, the fuel in the tank is different for every car. So my car has a very specific amount of fuel in its tank. Similarly, my dog has a very particular weight, different from all other dogs' weight. If I want to apply a method, an object method, for example, fuel car, I have to specify which car I'm fueling. So I do this by invoking my car dot fuel car, and then as a parameter I might say, how many gallons am I adding to my fuel tank? Similarly, I might say Bentley, the name of my dog, feed dog, grams, how much dog food <coughs> I am feeding Bentley. How do we construct a new object? We do it via something called a constructor. A constructor is a method that creates an individual object that is an instance of the class. Constructors are used as a new operator. So I can declare a variable x to be a class con. The above statement declares x to be a type object in the class con. x is assigned new car. That statement allocates storage to car object and sets x to be a pointer to that storage. Please note that car y is assigned x does not create a new car object. It simply means that there are now two variables, x and y, that are pointing to the same car object. Objects are variables containing variables. Java variables can contain a single value. For example, the string person is assigned John Doe. So person in this case is simply the string John Doe. But objects are variables, but objects can contain other variables. I can construct a class called person, note the capital P, that has four variables associated with it. First name, last name, age, and eye color. One way we can construct such an object is via the default constructor. Person P is assigned new person. P is now a variable pointing to a new person object. Now at that point, there is no value associated with its four values. But in the next four statements, I assign value. P dot first name is assigned John. P dot last name is assigned Joe. P dot age is assigned 50, etc. We can define our own object constructor. So for example, I can have a public person constructor with four parameters, first, last, age, and I. And the next four lines simply define the four variables in the person object. So they take the parameters, first, last, age, I, and assign them to the corresponding person object variable. The way I use this object constructor is given in the next two lines. I can define a person variable called my father, and he is assigned a new person, John Doe 50 Blue. I can declare another variable of class person to be a new person, first name Sally, last name Rally, age 48, eyes of green. I now have two person objects. Classes can be related to each other through a concept called inheritance. A, a student 
is a kind of person. Properties of the person class are inherited by the student class. But the student class may have additional properties and methods. For example, a student has a grade property. A student may matriculate in a course. We may define inheritance in Java as follows. Class student extends person. Left phrase, dot, 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 right phrase. Here is a diagram called a Grady Boot diagram. Uh, and Blue Jay draws them for you. So we have a notion of a class person. And we have another class student. Note the arrow pointing from student to person. That says that student inherits or extends from person. I may have another class called staff that also inherits from person. Staff might include instructors. Here's some Java code for the class person. The double slash is a comment. Okay, so first we define four, uh, four variables in the class person. And we give their types. We also define a constructor method. And it basically has as parameters those properties of person, and they are assigned to the variables in the person object. Notice the word this. This refers to the object being created. At this point in the constructor, we don't know what variable is assigned, but that variable will basically uh, become this. We've got a couple of other methods. One of them is set phone. It allows us to update the phone number. We have another method called set age, and it allows us to update the age. Here's another method. It's called print person. And what it does is it uses the system printer to print uh, a series of items. First, a constant text person, but then the name, the phone, the age, and the gender. So, for example, I can define a new person called the boss. And his name is Rip Thorn. His uh, telephone number is extension 5522. His age is 44, and he is a male. Now, if I invoke my boss.printPerson, I get the line below. Person Rip Thorn, 52244, male. So what have we covered today? We've covered the notion of a class and an object. We covered the notions of static versus instant, both variables and methods. We talked about constructors, and we talked about inheritance. These are the building blocks of object orientation in Java.